this is Dancing Rabbit and welcome to another Weekend Pagan Perspective. This for September 22nd. Uh, this has been previously recorded and I may be uploading it a little late because I believe that this weekend uh, Feather and I are actually going to be officiating at a hand fasting. So let's get to the question. From Celtic Mystery Girl 17, could one of your next topics be on how to make your own ritual or spell? Like a unique one that works well. I don't know how to create one. Please answer thanks. Well, yes. Yes, it could be. It could be our next topic. In fact, it is our topic of this week. How to create your own ritual and spell. Okay. Um, I'm glad that you're interested in creating your own while there's nothing really wrong with uh, using a ritual or spell that you might find in a book or online, I think that the ones you make yourself are more effective. So one of the things you might do is simply take one from a book or online and modify it. And I would suggest simplify it. I mean, less is best. Uh, it's not like, you know, you need more, 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 more of stuff. Um, less is best. I've been in some rituals where the uh, quarter calls were so lengthy that I feel pretty sure that the guardians of the Watchtower of the East had probably fallen asleep before the quarter call finally got up to the guardians of the Watchtower of the North. So, lots fewer words, more feeling. Rituals, at least those of the, uh, the Wiccan flavor, really have three parts. And I guess before you even begin doing that, you need to figure out uh, what's the purpose of this. What is your intent? What are you trying to do? You're celebrating uh, Maybaum, which has just happened. You're celebrating Sawain, which is coming up. Um, what is Sawain? What part of Sawain do you want to celebrate? Uh, what deities do you want to invite to help you celebrate them? How involved do you want to get with this? I mean, are we talking all sorts of tools and stuff on the altar and flaming torches at the quarters and you're going to cast the circle with a big broadsword or something? Or are we talking something much simpler where you're simply going to sit in a meditative position and ground center and uh, close your eyes and visualize the things around you. And one is not better or uh, more advanced than the other. They can both be very, very effective. Now, as I was about to say, the, uh, at least the Wiccan-based rituals could be divided into three parts, kind of like a short uh, three-act play or, um, you know, you're going to write a report for your English class. There's a beginning, there's a middle, and there's an end. Now, in the beginning, you're going to set up your sacred space, so this might involve cleansing the area physically and uh, ritually. It uh, could involve casting a circle, and there's all sorts of ways to do that. Uh, calling the quarters, inviting the deities that you want to invite to this ritual, and stating why you were doing it. And I would suggest that before you do any of those parts, that you cleanse yourself, that you ground and center so that you're going in, uh, you know, calmly, focusedly. Uh, is that a word, focusedly? Well, I don't know. Okay, the middle part of the ritual is, you know, the main part of it. It's like, what are you going to do? This is a Sawain ritual, so you're going to honor the ancestors, for example. Well, what are you going to do to do that? And there's all sorts of possibilities. So look in some of the books, look online, get some ideas, and then get creative with it. You've got, um, from now, about really six weeks until Sawain. So you've got plenty of time to think about this stuff. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, the third part is also fairly brief, maybe the briefest part of it, and that's the closing. That's when you say goodbye to the gods. You say goodbye to the quarters. I don't really like the idea of dismissing the quarters because that sounds like 
that uh, the elements, the elementals are some sort of servant that we can just say, okay, you know, we're, we're tired of uh, playing with you, you know, go away, go home, till next time when we call you. No, I, I think, uh, you know, a farewell or a goodbye is, is a, lot, <laughs> a lot more respectful and a lot more real than that. And you're going to take down the circle if you've cast a circle. You're going to ground the powers that you have raised so that you can leave the place and not be too zingy or, or wired. Uh, look in some of the books and, and see what they say and, and borrow it. And I really would suggest simplify, simplify, simplify. Uh, if you're looking for a good book that's got a how to do rituals, uh, there's one by uh, Phaedra Bonowitz, and I think it's actually called um, Pagan Rituals. And it really has to do more with group rituals and large group rituals. But it is, it is really an interesting read. Phaedra is one of my favorite authors, and she's, I guess, the only big-name pagan that I've ever actually met in person. I got to spend some time with her a couple of years ago. Phaedra, a feather and I did. Uh, the other book that I would highly recommend is My Own Way of the Horned God. It's available on Amazon in paperback and in Kindle now. And uh, my approach to teaching how to do ritual in a book is rather than giving you a cookbook like with eight rituals for the eight Sabbaths and a full moon ritual and a new moon ritual and a ritual for this and a ritual for that, uh, I give a ritual example, and I think it was Sawain, and then I deconstruct it, I unpack it, and look at the different parts, and, okay, why did I do this, and what are some other things that you could have done instead of this, and how could you modify it? Now, go out and write your own ritual, and uh, if you don't do it just right, I promise you, the gods are not going to be horribly offended. If you're trying to raise power and uh, effect magical change, perhaps the worst that can happen is nothing. But, uh, you know, no evil beasties are going to jump out and get you. Now, about, um, about magical spells, uh, the same kind of advice. It's a whole lot simpler than you're trying to make it. I would suggest you start with something like string magic or chord magic or knot magic. They're different names for the same thing. So you can do a little online research and find you a good uh, chord magic spell, something like maybe uh, the Witch's Ladder. I think I have that up as a really old video from three or four years ago on my channel. And do something like that or some simple candle magic. In my opinion, what's happening in a magical spell, when you're casting a spell, doing a work of magic, is that you are raising emotional energy, you're bringing emotional energy from outside, from nature, and you're channeling it toward a specific goal or intent. And sometimes it's done in a, a burst of energy, and sometimes it's done rather slowly over a period of time. Um, let's see, second question is very similar. I've never done a ritual group or solo, but I have great interest in it. Was wondering if you have any advice. Also, wondering if you could say which is better to do as your first ritual group or solo. Um, I think it may depend on um, whether you can go to a group ritual and maybe the quality of the group ritual. It's, it's kind of like asking, well, which is better, steak or chicken? Well, it may depend on what sort of mood you're in, and it may depend on the quality of the steak or the chicken. I mean, I've been some places where the steak was tough and tasteless, and I'd a lot rather have something cheaper but tastier. So if you can go to a group ritual, that's great, um, because you're not in charge. You're there to maybe just watch, participate in a rather minimal fashion, or maybe, you know, you're there to full-blown participate, at least as a participant, but you're not having to high priest or high priestess the whole thing or design it. So, you know, if you're not able to do that, then uh, perhaps a solo ritual. I, I'm having kind of a senior moment here and don't remember if I've recommended uh, Cunningham's 
witchcraft for the so Wicca for the solitary practitioner or not, but if uh, you haven't gotten that one, haven't read it, I highly recommend it. Okay, the wind is really coming up, and it's about time for me to go wake Feather up, and we're going out for a little uh, conjure bingo. The uh, Bayou City Conjure Radio is uh, doing a charity bingo for homeless veterans here in Houston, and we're going to go uh, spend a little money and have a little fun. And isn't that what old people do? Play bingo, shuffleboard. <laughs> okay, well, we got sub week coming up, and then October, so till I see you all, or <laughs> actually, you see me because I'm not seeing you. This is a one way deal. Uh, in October, Dancing Rabbit. Peace.